Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Built and Deployed. Here, we will take a moment to highlight our customers and how they have leveraged Oracle Cloud to successfully deploy their solutions. My name is Cassidy Bartlett, and I'm a cloud engineer here with Oracle. Today, I'm here with Shalab Batnagar from HBSS QRide to discuss his company's journey to Oracle Cloud. Shalab, could you tell us about your role at HBSS, what your company does, and its mission? My name is Shalab Bhatnagar, and I am Director of Engineering at QRide, a brokerage, paratransit, and microtransit subsidiary of HBSS. And our cloud-based software has been providing transportation rides and logistics to people living in underserved communities throughout the country using mobile scheduling, automated dispatching, and AI-based route optimization tools. Our system processes around 40,000 plus passenger trips per day for more than 700 clients within the healthcare, education, nonprofit, and corporate sectors. Could you overview your previously on-premise workloads that are now running on OCI? So before we move on to OCI, we were hosting our client solutions on our on-premise and facility co-location facilities, and they were typically web servers and database running on our hardware. So I'd love to pivot and talk a little bit about your deployment on OCI. As we started getting into more and more uh, contracts, we started expanding. Specifically, we started getting more statewide deals. Our deployment workload and the complexity started growing more. And the security started becoming more and more complex and more and more demanding. So we had to come up with a system that, first of all, we should be able to use infrastructure in a free manner rather than getting restricted with what all we have procured so far and what is installed in our premise. That's when we started heading into the cloud environment. And with this cloud environment, the other challenge that came in front of us was that our contracts with the client also wanted that we are not sharing their systems with other clients. So the moment you tell somebody that you are getting into public cloud, the very first question they would ask us is, are you going to share our systems? So when we were heading into cloud and the interesting feature which made me very happy and was one of my and still is one of my favorite features of OCI is the way OCI allows the compartments. I treat them as folders and subfolders, but it instantaneously gave me a mechanism whereby I could host the resources of my clients in a specific compartment and thereby tell them that here you are, you are not only virtually, you are also separated Nobody can get into your compartment. Nobody can see it. And it also benefited us because I could then focus on a particular compartment and find out what kind of resource that compartment is using. And is it enough for them or I need to scale up? So the compartment brought us into the uh, separation of the clients. Then we had to worry about how do we get our fundamental architecture, which is the web browsers, which the client uses. So we need to run our web servers and the web servers, they connect back into the database and various other application servers. So at a higher level, we said we will use a mechanism of public uh, subnet and a private subnet where the database being a very holy thing in our systems where we have to make sure the database is secure and is kept secret had to be in the private subnet. And the web servers, they went into the public subnet. And these systems, they run practically 24 by seven as they book rides for our clients and the rides are to be performed and the mobile devices connect to these systems. Would you mind talking a little bit about how you chose to use the Oracle Database Cloud Service and the ability it lets you have to 
have a standby database um, and a disaster recovery plan. Most important thing that all our clients always ask us is before we tell them that your system is going to be hosted on a Oracle cloud or public cloud, how secure is the database? What kind of encryption do you have on the system? And is their database or is your hosting compliant? Majority of the compliances which we have to adhere to are directly to HIPAA compliance. And one of the biggest feature of HIPAA compliance is that the database at rest should be encrypted and the encryption has to be of minimum 128. But what I found out was, which is good for us and a good feature offered by database services in OCI, that not only it has a feature which is called as transparent data encryption, TDE technology, which is offered on the database services. It also gives us a simple click through configuration feature and I can turn my encryption from 128 into 256, which is the highest AES encryption that one can get. And I just got them enabled and this makes my database very secure. And when I talk to my clients about it, they're quite happy. The next biggest challenge that comes to us is that, which I am always have to talk and explain to my clients is, what is your disaster recovery plan? What is your business continuity plan? And all those things which are affiliated with that. As per the compliance adherence, we have to also make sure the primary and secondary databases are not in the same region or in the same geographical area. And here again, OCI came to our rescue. Our primary database resides in the Ashburn region, which is the East Coast. And the secondary database goes into the Phoenix region, which is the West Coast. And then what we do is we activate or we use the active data guard feature of Oracle database. This is a very interesting feature and I would like to talk more about it because Typically, a data guard is a DBA interested job. They go into the database and they set up the data guard. Whereas while I'm on OCI, for me, it was few clicks and the data guard was enabled. Not only the data guard was enabled, it started replicating my data or cloning my data from primary to secondary. And I could see on the console the synchronization is just a few seconds away. I didn't even have to bother about the latency between East Coast and West Coast. Data, for me, everything was a magic which was happening and my secondary database was up and running. Another interesting feature of Active Data Guard, which my clients, they love it, is that while the data is getting cloned onto the secondary, I can still access my secondary database run ad hoc queries on it, and even run analytical reports on it without having to put extra load or additional load on my primary database. So this feature made my disaster recovery plan a breeze and very effective with my clients. Shalab, as always, it was great speaking with you again today and hearing about HBSS's success on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. I look forward to continuing our work together. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Built and Deployed. Stay tuned for additional conversations around our customers' architectures and successes on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure.